the Caribbean. A word we for some reason pronounce differently when talking about the movie than when we talk about the region, right? Am I the only one who does this? The region of the Caribbean, the Pirates of the Caribbean. Anyway, there's a lot of ideas that people put forward about all the islands being united in a single country. I don't think this makes a lot of sense, because while some of the native populations have similar cultures, the colonizing powers that took control of them were very different, and as a consequence, the current countries are as well. Some of these islands were British, others were Spanish, some French, Portuguese, temporarily, or Dutch. So uniting them all into one nation wouldn't be very viable. However, uniting them according to their colonizers could be. And in this video, I want to talk about precisely that. A union that took place between 1958 and 1962, not that long ago, that most people don't know about. I didn't until I came across a map online that depicted it and I decided to make this video. This is the story of the West Indian Federation. The West Indian Federation, also known as the West Indies, was a short-lived political union that existed from 1958 to 1962. Various islands in the Caribbean that were colonies of the United Kingdom, including Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, Jamaica, and those on the Leeward and Windward Islands, came together to form the Federation. Plus, Guiana and Belize also kind of joined, but only with observer status. Probably thinking, let's see how this goes, and if it works, then we can actually join. Its effective capital was in Port of Spain in Trinidad and Tobago, but apparently the supposed capital was Chaguaramash, also in Trinidad and Tobago. Except the British forgot that they had leased it to the United States as a naval base, so they couldn't use it. This is useful in predicting how well this story goes. A single country, which now corresponds to nine independent countries, Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Dominica, Grenada, Jamaica, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago, plus also five current still British overseas territories, Anguilla, Montserrat, the Cayman Islands, and Turks and Caicos, with 11 languages, English, Patois, Spanish, French, Hindustani, Chinese, Arabic, Antillian, French Creole, Tamil, and Portuguese. Some languages were adaptations of the native languages, some of the colonizers, and some of the migrants who had eventually moved there. Their objective was to follow the footsteps of the Canadians or the Australians, forming a federation of previous provinces or states of the British Empire, uniting and then running towards full independence. Even if they would keep the British monarch as their head of state, as is the case with Canada and Australia. In fact, Britain classified the federation as being part of its Caribbean and North Atlantic territories, and still viewed it as one of their possessions and even instigated its creation. But this path to independence never happened, and it seems that Guiana and Belize were right to hold off on joining, because there ended up being no point to it, with the union only lasting about four years. The collapse apparently had to do with internal conflicts and which territories and islands would hold more power, but also over how the federation would be governed and the constant influence of the United Kingdom. But before we go into more detail about how it ended at the end of the video, let's take a look at a few details of this very temporary but very interesting country. Their flag was this one, a blue field with four white wavy lines and a golden circle in the center. A pretty cool flag in my opinion. The blue field represents the Caribbean Sea, the white lines are waves and the golden circle, the sun. The designer and creator of this flag was, I think, Adna Manley, which was a Jamaican artist. This description was present in a local newspaper that the country got to the point of having, and it was called the West Indian Gazette. Their coat of arms was this one, a very brown one, although they say that it's golden but it looks brown. On the shield we see 10 discs, each representing an island group member of the federation. On the top is the British lion, representing the British heritage, since all these territories had been colonized by them, and on the sides there are two pelican birds the country's national animal. At the bottom is the nation's motto, to dwell together in unity. Oh, and also at the top is a torch, which apparently signifies a beacon to light a path. A fun fact is that 
this torch is still present in the coats of arms of some of the previous member regions such as St. Lucia and St. Kitts and Nevis. While it's true that they were very far apart, the country actually had a decent population. The total population was between 3 and 4 million people with the majority being of West African descent. Minorities included Indians from actual India called East Indians, Europeans, Chinese and Caribs. In terms of religion, most of the population was Protestant due to British heritage with significant numbers of Catholics and some Hindus and Muslims from the East Indian population. They are now equivalent to nine countries, but the number of islands was much larger because each country corresponds to a large number of islands. There were around 24 main inhabited islands and approximately 220 minor offshore islands, islets and cays, some inhabited and some not. The largest island was Jamaica, located in the far northwest of the Federation, and to the southeast was the second largest, Trinidad, followed by Barbados in terms of population. Officially, there were 12 provinces of this now gone country, Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Cayman Islands, Dominica, Grenada, Jamaica, Montserrat, St. Christopher, Nevis, and Gila, which were all grouped up, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Trinidad and Tobago, and the Turks and Caicos. Each of these bearing their own flag, still at the time their colonial ensigns with the Union Jack. They had their own currency as well, which was called the West Indies dollar, although Jamaica continued to use the pound for some reason. And when it comes to the way that it was ruled, you can kind of understand why it failed. The queen was the head of state. Then there was a crown representative, a governor general, who had power to veto any laws that the federation passed. These laws were made and passed by the new country's parliament, the federal parliament of the West Indies, which consisted of two chambers, the senate with 19 members nominated by the governor general and a house of representatives with 45 members elected by the people. And here was one of the issues, the distribution of members across the islands and the representativeness of each population. Jamaica had 17 seats, Trinidad had 10, Barbados had five, Montserrat had one, and the remaining islands had two seats each. On top of this, there was a government, but apparently it didn't function like the governments we know. It was more like a council. The governor general presided it, ruling alongside a prime minister and 10 other officials. The country existed long enough to hold elections between two parties, both of them of Jamaican origin, although there was a third from Trinidad. And it was especially this rivalry between Jamaica and Trinidad that put the country's survival at risk. They also didn't function like a single country. For instance, its provinces were not contained in a single customs union, and so each province functioned as a separate economy with their own tariffs, and largely because these smaller provinces were afraid of being overwhelmed by the larger islands. There was also no freedom of movement between them, so you could say, okay, the only union aspect between them was having common rulers who decided their fate as a whole. But no, not even that. The federal government was very weak and their financial budget was very small, so essentially it held no power when compared to local governments. The provincial budgets of Jamaica and Trinidad were both larger than the federal budget, and this led to repeated requests for those states to provide greater financing to the federal government, which were not well received as Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago together already contributed 85% of the federal revenue. Not that this is uncommon in other unions, there are always provinces who are just richer than others for various reasons. We see the same in Australia or Canada with the less populated and less hospitable regions providing way less contributions to the country's budget and sometimes even needing the federal state to survive. It's a matter of solidarity and contribution to a common project of creating a single nation or union and I guess that spirit just 
didn't really exist here. Speaking of Canada, apparently this West Indies Federation had an especially close relationship with them, probably because they were what they ambitioned to be, a successful and prosperous independent country which evolved from a federation of several former British colonies. And it seems that some of the leaders of these West Indies wanted to investigate the possibility of actually becoming a Canadian province. There were actually talks and negotiations that took place trying to make this happen, but they broke down in 1961. All of this eventually led to the dissolution of the Federation, but the main reason that triggered it was Jamaica's discontent, for a lot of reasons. They were geographically further away from most of the other islands, they had a negatively disproportionate representation in the federal parliament, they were upset that they weren't chosen as the capital, and they felt like they contributed too much to the federal budget. And most of all, they disliked the fact that the Federation was still a British colony and not serving as its supposed path for full independence and sovereignty. Meanwhile, other British colonies like Cyprus and Sierra Leone had gained independence, so many Jamaicans believe that the island could and should seek independence in its own right and would be more successful doing so alone. And so, in 1961, they held a referendum for independence and leaving the Federation, with yes, winning with 57% of the votes. Trinidad and Tobago tried to take leadership of the Union and fight for its survival, but they were soon met with all the issues that Jamaica had faced, and so they left as well. The smaller islands still try to make it work, centering the capital in Barbados, but it just wasn't possible from a financial point of view. And so, in 1962, the United Kingdom's parliament legally dissolved the West Indies Federation. The remaining eight provinces once again became British colonies separately, most of which became independent on their own later on. The fact that it was the UK's parliament who legally dissolved the Union kind of shows us another reason why this didn't work. It wasn't only a local initiative, it was also a UK initiative. And without true dedication of the members to the idea of unity, thus creating solidarity between them, the project was doomed to fail since the beginning. Today, the only organization that seeks to unite these nations is the Caribbean Community or CARICOM, but this is just an organization of free independent nations with the aim of promoting cooperation between themselves. So that was a brief history of what is one of the most unknown countries that temporarily existed in the Caribbean. How it came to be, how it existed, who its members were, how it worked, its many problems, the obstacles it faced, and how these eventually led to its dissolution and disappearance. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe and leave a comment below with your opinions, thoughts, and most of all, suggestions for future videos. Are there any other unknown countries you would like me to make a video about or just random topics you think would be cool to talk about in a video? I will see you next time for more general knowledge.